Welcome to Traceability TV News, your source for the latest updates on global traceability and safety concerns. I'm Miriam Munyoki. Slovak Prime Minister survives assassination attempt. France declares state of emergency in New Caledonia. Billboard collapse claims lives in thunderstorm. Former Gambian minister sentenced for crimes against humanity. Evacuation orders issued as wildfire threatens Alberta. South Africa passes universal health coverage law. Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fixo has survived a politically motivated assassination attempt after being shot multiple times by an assailant. The 59-year-old underwent successful surgery following the attack, with Deputy Prime Minister Thomas Taraba confirming that Fixo is no longer in a life-threatening condition. The shooting, which occurred as the Prime Minister was leaving a government meeting in central Slovakia, shocked the nation and drew condemnation from international leaders. France has declared a state of emergency in its Pacific Islands territory of New Caledonia amidst escalating unrest over changes to provincial election rules. This move follows days of violence resulting in multiple casualties. The state of emergency effective immediately grants authorities broad powers to restore public order with police and military reinforcements deployed. Hundreds have been injured and over 200 individuals labeled as rioters have been arrested. The state of emergency will remain in force for 12 days with authorities determined to protect the population and restore stability. In a devastating incident in Mumbai, at least 14 people lost their lives and many others sustained injuries as a massive billboard collapsed during a thunderstorm. According to local authorities, the billboard was unlawfully installed, raising questions about safety regulations and oversight. The thunderstorm, accompanied by strong winds and rain, paralyzed parts of Mumbai, causing widespread disruption to transportation and infrastructure. Trees were uprooted, power outages occurred, and the city's train network experienced delays. The adverse weather conditions also forced the diversion of several flights from the city's busy airport. Urgent developments in Alberta, Canada, as authorities issue evacuation orders for several neighborhoods in Fort McMurray. The move comes as growing wildfire edges closer to the heart of the country's Tar Sands region. With the wildfire's potential spread looming, authorities stress the necessity of clearing these neighborhoods to facilitate effective wildfire defense efforts. The current wildfire spans 23,700 acres and remains classified as out of control. Located just 15 kilometers, the blaze erratic behavior poses significant challenges for firefighters, exacerbated by reduced visibility due to smoke. Switzerland's top criminal court has sentenced Usman Sonko, a former interior minister of the Gambia, to 20 years in prison for crimes against humanity. The verdict, announced by the Federal Criminal Court in Switzerland, found Sonko guilty of intentional homicide, torture and false imprisonment during former Prime Minister Yahya Hamid's 22-year rule. Sonko, who served as Interior Minister from 2006 to 2016, faced accusations of supporting attacks against opponents in the Gambia. The charges include nine counts of crimes against humanity, with Sonko acquitted of rape charges. Rights groups welcomed the ruling, emphasizing the significance of holding perpetrators accountable under universal jurisdiction. Sonko's trial marks a milestone in Switzerland's efforts to combat impunity, with this being the second individual tried for crimes against humanity under this principle. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has signed into law a bill aimed at providing universal health coverage. The move, hailed as a major step towards a more just society, comes just two weeks before a fiercely competitive election. 
the president described the provision of healthcare in the country as fragmented and unsustainable, emphasizing the need for equality. The National Health Insurance Act aims to address the two-tier health system, gradually limiting the role of private insurance and creating a new public fund for free access to healthcare. The official opposition, Democratic Alliance, plans to legally challenge the new law, while civil society groups and business forums have raised concerns about its affordability and feasibility. Hello and welcome to Visibility Sports News. I'm Regan Gitaro. Caitlin Clark made her highly anticipated WNBA debut with the Indiana Fever, attracting a record breaking audience of 2.1 million viewers. Despite the Fever's loss, Clark's performance garnered significant attention. In her debut game, Clark scored a team high 20 points but also committed 10 turnovers and 4 fouls, reflecting a challenging transition to the professional level. However, her potential was evident as she showcased her scoring ability and three-point shooting prowess. While disappointed by the loss, Clark remained optimistic and expressed readiness for the challenges ahead. Her remarkable collegiate achievements, including breaking the all-time Division I scoring record, have positioned her as a rising star in the WNBA. That wraps up our sport news for today. I have been your host, Regan Geta. On behalf of my colleague, Miriam, please stay tuned for more updates and thank you for watching. Traceability TV. We trace it, you trust it.